more, take your browser over to supertalktv.com. You'll see that I'm not alone here on Good Things Today. Joining us is Ms. Stewart McMillan. She is the director of the Association for Excellence in Education for the Tupelo School District. And man, they are up to some good things. So, hey, Stewart. Hey, Rebecca. It's so nice to be able to connect with you today. Thank you for having me on. Well, it's really good to hear about all the cool things that are going on there in the Tupelo School District. I feel like you all collectively are rocking it, and I know it takes a village. And this is just another arm of many programs that looks at ways to sort of help the students and the teachers effectively in the classroom. So give us a little background. What is the Association for Excellence in Education, which I know you guys call AEE? We do. So AEE is actually a special project of the CREATE Foundation, and we were founded in 1983. Um, we have a mission where we want to expand and enhance the educational experience um, for all teachers and students in the Tupelo Public School District. Um, and since our inception in 1983, we've actually given over $3 million um, to the teachers and students in the district to fund innovative programs and projects and trips um, and lots of exciting things that are taking place for our students to have the most authentic and innovative learning experiences possible. So a lot of these grants, I'm assuming, Stuart, help teachers maybe go above and beyond of what they, what they normally get or have access to for their classrooms, which will give them the opportunity to, you know, do the fun things that they wish they could, but it requires either extra equipment or extra materials. Is that the kind of stuff the grants are used for? That's exactly right. So uh, an example of that this year, uh, one of my favorites was a STEM on the Move grant that was at our Early Childhood Education Center, and it focused on bringing STEM learning from robotics, coding, um, different equipment and activities and materials um, on a cart that could be used by all teachers at the school. Um, so those experiences that are going above and beyond, that are enhancing those experiences, um, that are giving students the opportunity to be engineers and to use that design process and figure out how to solve problems and and do different things. Um, so that's exactly what we're targeting. How do we go above and beyond and fund things that the school district wouldn't be able to fund normally? So how many grants do y'all normally give out each uh, school year, Stuart? That's a great question, Rebecca. So last year we actually funded 31 grants totaling about $75,000 for students in the school district. Um, and we're really hopeful and optimistic that this upcoming year that we'll be able to fund grants across all of the schools and fund additional funds. What's the process in applying for one? I know that's the, one of the big barriers for a lot of folks in other type of grants. I mean, usually there's a process, there's a lot of red tape, there's a lot of follow up and, you know, it can be a little daunting. Is it an easy process for teachers and students to apply for it? Our goal as board members is to support teachers in the process of applying for grants. So there is a simple cover sheet um, and some components of that application that we need to have, as well as a budget template. Um, and we do make sure that those grants are very specific. So they're not just writing for a $3,000 to do a STEM cart, like the ECEC example. They're actually writing for the materials, the coding that they'll be doing. What are those robots look like? What are those art supplies? What are those engineering supplies they're going to be using? Um, and we as board members actually support and come to each of the schools to share about the timeline, the process, to answer questions, um, and to help and support those teachers to make sure that they have all the information they need to be able to apply. I feel like every school district in Mississippi should have an AEE program, but unfortunately, I think there's only two in the state, you guys and one other. So why was this so important back in 83, which is almost 40 years ago, that Tupelo said, hey, as a community, we need to figure out how to support our schools? Uh, I love that question, Rebecca. So I think one of the things that we're really blessed with in Northeast Mississippi is a lot of individuals who want to give back. Um, and there's been a strong focus on public education. And I have to give credit to the founding board members, to the Bill and Doyce Dees and Jane and Lewis Whitfield and Henry and Martha Tate Dodge, these individuals who've been pioneers in our area of both personally and with their businesses supporting public education. Um, so that's really a gift. We, in 
Tupelo like to call the Tupelo spirit, something that Jack Reed um, Sr. and George McLean, some of these leaders kind of show as how do we as a community all come together to best meet the needs of our community. And that's something that I feel really strongly about and blessed to have such a active and intentional board to help continue that work today. Um, and full disclosure, COVID put a stop on a lot of things just like it did for other organizations. And I, I think we're coming back now understanding we're focused on the right things and wanting to make sure we expand our reach um, and really continue this strong track record and le legacy um, of giving back to the school district. So hope to see that 3 million um, continue to grow in terms of our overall gifts and impact in the school district. Well, when you look through the AEE of Tupelo's Facebook page, Stuart, you see that it probably will because you see nothing but smiling faces and happy kids when they're getting to take part in a lot of their activities. Are the kids aware that some of the fun things that they're getting to do is because community lovers, you know, see and hear them and want them to have these experiences? I think in some instances they do, some instances they might not. Um, but we've been really blessed, especially at the high school level, to leverage some of the students to actually showcase some of the grants in action. Um, so we have some really intentional teachers at the high school level who actually have purchased um, equipment, cameras, podcasting equipment and things and are doing work actually focused on authentic learning experiences. Maybe some future individuals you'll get to work with one day, Rebecca. Um, so those students have been really great in showcasing and sharing gratitude for AEE. Um, I, I think across the board, our teachers are very aware and very appreciative, um, but varying levels in terms of the students actually knowing that AEE is funding those equipment that they're using in the classroom. I, I'm always surprised at how creative the teachers can get when given an opportunity, right? I mean, they really go above and beyond to think through how can they best utilize extra funds. And here in Mississippi, we always are able to take make something stretch a whole lot further and to know that if you have the idea for the STEM cart, well, yes, one classroom is going to get it, but now everybody is going to be able to benefit from someone's um, creativity. It's got to be hard to whittle that down to... 30, 31 grants a year. That's exactly right, Rebecca. We received, I think it was about $256,000 in requests. Um, across a little over 60 grants last year. Um, and it is very difficult to, to whittle that down when there's so many teachers doing great work. I think we, as a board, have a really structured rubric to help make those decisions, really focusing on is it innovative? Is it a good use of funds? How many students is it impacting? Are there community connections? Um, and it's really exciting to see those in action um, and to see those grants that were front runners, that were funded, um, come to fruition. Um, another that I really cared about this year that we're excited to highlight this upcoming year as well was at Thomas Street Elementary. They received two grants um, and they actually used those grants to support bringing in teaching artists, focusing on history, and they did a program on Elvis Presley. Um, and I know that's something big. We are the birthplace of Elvis. We have the video that's coming out. Um, just lots of excitement right now about Elvis in our community. But I think it's even more exciting when you can gear that towards student learning. And those students learned about the different decades and learned about history, incorporated the arts, and then were able to put on a final product where they perform for our community. Um, and that to me is so exciting. When you can see the connections that are being made, the opportunities and the ability to perform and showcase that is just really inspiring. And it's a it's a testament to the teachers. Uh, just I can't say enough nice things about the teachers in our district, the work that they're doing, the impact that they're having to meet the needs of all students. You bring up teachers and you also brought up COVID, Stewart. I think one of the bright things that came out of that is all the parents realized how precious our teachers are <laughs> and we're willing Preach. to support them and do what, you know, do what we can to sort of keep them happy and keep them, you know, teaching our kids for sure. And this is a unique way, I, I feel like, if you're in the right uh, market or the means to do that, particularly if you're in Tupelo and you want to get involved with the Association for Excellence in Education or AEE, where do you go, Stuart? 
Great question, Rebecca. So you can actually find out information. We have a Facebook page. We have a social media presence. Um, we are happy to find ways for you to get connected either to give um, or we're also always looking for community reviewers. So like I shared, we have these grant applications that we get from teachers and they are all reviewed by at least five community members. Um, so there are lots of opportunities to get involved above and beyond just giving a financial contribution. Um, and I'm happy to be the point of contact. Um, my email address is stuart at createfoundation.com um, and I'm happy to be available and accessible for any and all questions related to this work. All righty. Thank you so much for your time, Stuart. Stick with us. We got more for you up next.